Well, the world is obviously, or certainly the UK, has changed quite a lot in the last two years, and there are issues at macro level and micro level which are probably influencing this sort of issue that every business, whether it's a venue or AV supplier, has trying to find good stuff, and it's always been a problem, frankly. Obviously, the B word, I'm not going to mention too much. I will. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, has exasperated an, uh, the problem that we're, most businesses have, and finding good people is tough, and going out for any recruitment role, you know, there's a lot of people out there, but really good ones that you can afford, it's not easy, and the events industry isn't the best paid, we don't have the biggest budgets for staffing, for lots of reasons, but it, you know, it's, a, it's a hugely rewarding industry. Well, I was always going to mention Brexit. Um, two years ago, I wrote a series of blogs, um, as you know, um, on the topic and uh, debated a couple of uh, MPs or one former MP on it. And one of the things I did mention in the blogs and in, in that debate was around uh, the reliance of the hospitality industry in particular on um, migrant workers. And according to a UK labour force survey back in 2013, which I know is a little bit old, but 26% um, of uh, workers in our particular sector in hospitality is made up of migrants. And a lot of those were skilled workers and a lot of those were managerial level as well. So that sort of gives us some flavour of um, the makeup of the industry. And in London in particular, this is across segments, 60% uh, of the uh, labour force is actually migrant workers. So it shows how um, influential and, and how reliant we are in, in the capital and in particular on this on this sector. So yeah, we, we need to do more, um, not only as an industry, but I think as a, as a country to, um, you know, get more of our, our younger people trained up um, in, in terms of where some of these skill shortages are and you know if, if somebody was to say to me what are the skills gap and shortages across across the country I don't, I don't know particularly what areas we're, we're most failing in um, I know technology is, is obviously one which is relevant to uh, to what we do but um, I couldn't tell you sort of what the top ones are well, I think it's experience I think it's half the problem because you want and because we are wages that we are looking to pay only really will support younger people quite often uh, in our industry that finding people with experience of the right type is not easy when you're only offering an X salary. Mm. And I think getting people to have more experience in different roles, giving them more autonomy to get on with it and confidence in them to get on with it, I think is hugely important. And there are, in my view, a bit too many micromanagers out there. You, know, um, and you need to manage, obviously, your team and lead them and help them grow but you need to let them if you've chosen well within your recruitment process run it how they think they should be yeah there, yeah. Are, there are specific skills where you obviously need to be trained up in a specific job and whether it's a restaurant or a hotel there'll be a certain style that you'll need to adhere to within their own brand guidelines but you know, that shouldn't take very long yeah, so what you're talking about there is as well uh, giving people the freedom to learn more skills on the job and not being completely defined to a particular job description or role and then giving that freedom for people to sort of transcend um, skills a, a little bit more. Absolutely, I think, I think the, the workforce has got to be a bit more, you know, more flexible and I think the workforce today actually likes being a bit more flexible rather than being pigeonholed and stuck in one particular role. You, know, you want to do that for six months then move on to the next one and then find your particular niche and then expand the role within that. I think then everybody wins, whether it's the business themselves or the individual, of being valued and, and actually growing as a, as a career and as a profession within those roles. Yeah, but, and it's funny actually, because in, in a sense, the hospitality industry is actually particularly good at that. If, if you think about you know, the careers of a lot of general managers or senior people in the industry, on, on certainly supplier side, hotel side, they've typically been through different uh, parts of the hotel and then different skills so they've done front of house they've done operations they've done event management food and beverage um, and, and then progressed into management and if I think about agency and even my own career you know I was quite fortunate working for an agency who would give me a little bit of freedom to try different things so I started in operations that went into a more commercial role and then ended up in supply chain procurement uh, before being in more senior positions and I, you know, I enjoyed that, having a more well-rounded, sort of uh, more holistic view of the business. 
and particularly if you want to progress into a management and managing a business, then, then that's really valuable. Outside of any degrees or you know formal education, I think with younger employees it's it's uh, trickier because obviously you know by nature of their age and when they come out of education and you know you have to be in education at least until sixteen in this country, the likelihood is you're not going to have a lot of formal skills in terms of the workforce. I say formal, um, you know people do do work experience and they show entrepreneurial endeavour and they'll maybe have certain things and projects they do in their life where they can show that. So I think young people need to be shown, and I wish I'd been given more of this uh, guidance when I was younger, sort of what you've done in your own time and at your own age and at school and how that has relevance to, to what you can offer an employee and almost give you that confidence because I think a lot of people coming out of school, particularly if they come out of education really early and want to go into work, are typically quite nervous because they think, oh, well, you know, I, I haven't got the skills and the experience. But attitude for, for us, I mean, we talk about it a lot when we've been recruiting recently. It's the number one thing because you can't, you can't teach that. Um, you know, attitude is, is very much a thing that is, uh, you know, very very difficult to, to to get a lot of the time. So the skills we, we can certainly as an employer we can provide that and as. Um, if we can't provide it ourselves, then somebody else can be providing it. You can nurture that attitude, though, within, because you've got to keep that attitude. Of course, yeah. And that <coughs> passion, and our industry is hugely passionate, so if we can actually find someone who's got the passion already, who's got the attitude, we can then help them nurture it and make it you know, grow even more, and that's hugely important, rather than just trying to sort of almost mould them into a single uh, sort of cog in in a bigger wheel, we need to allow them to be a bit more uh, flexible and allow them to show their character as well, whilst within the constraints of a particular business. It's very important. Correct, which actually leads on to company culture. So that's removing the actual individual. It's it's actually you know the company culture and, and who's managing that business and whether they're giving somebody the freedom um, a, around sort of broadening their skill set but to, to the point you were just making around nurturing them and spending the time and the effort and having that mindset to do that which you know you, you referred to it earlier but the, there's some businesses in, in our industry that are quite stuck in their ways they, they are quite old school and, and some of the managers and even some of the owners if we're looking at the hotel side have a certain mentality in terms of a, an old way of doing business which is very you know strict and to the book and to the letter and Times have moved on, and as, as each generation goes by, we sort of learn, you know, new ways of doing things, which uh, you know, people sort of tend to take on, and, and businesses move forward. And I think we're seeing more of a blend of that these days, but I think still more needs to be done. Um, I think with any obstacle, there's always opportunities. Um, so I wouldn't use the word crisis. I think we've had a long-standing issue in terms of um, skills and education and. Uh, particularly in our industry, I, you know, both of us have sat on industry boards and it's been a topic of conversation that I know of for at least 18, 19 years. So it's not going to be solved overnight, it needs to be taken right back to grassroots in terms of education um, and, and the way we're teaching people. But we also need to, um, should I use the word, we need to make the industry more sexy and appealing to people outside of the core skills we're looking for. So you know, we think of hospitality and events as being service and delivery, but there's a whole host of different professions that sit around that, from marketing professionals, sales professionals, accountants, lawyers, technologists, and um, we want to be attra attracting the best of that talent as well to support the businesses that are in our space. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's enough knowledge and expertise and understanding of the opportunities in our industry, the industry as a whole. You know, when we say specifically, you know, we've been using the word hospitality in, in this chat, but if we think just specifically about uh, the segment of events, when I've said to my friends I work in the events industry, they're like, what's that? They just think of parties and festivals, um, which, you know, a lot of students when they're going to do event management courses at university, that's what they're thinking and they, they want to go into that side of it. And that's partly why we do have a skills gap because, you know, there's a feeling that a lot of what's being taught in the universities we're not getting the right skills coming out. So there's a whole host of things that can be done. But we don't know, back to Brexit, what the final deal looks like. So we can't really say whether there's going to be a crisis or not, or what that's going to look like until we know what the final deal looks like. The industry is not different from any other industry, really. And I think when you come out of whatever training you've 
you've had as a young person, you need to get your face out there and you go and speak to people and it's the old networking piece. I had someone recently contact me who uh, had heard about Eventopedia through a mutual contact and, uh, and just said, look, great to meet you and have a chat to see about how I can get into the industry. So I then gave them a little bit of advice, much like this really, is networking, go and speak to as many people as possible, mm. tell them what you've done. This person had, had uh, got an event management degree at, from uh, a university, so had obviously got a lot of uh, training, but really hadn't got the experience. And so I actually put, put some emails out to my network, and she actually ended up getting a six-month placement at one of the media companies, which is great. Mm, so it's, you know, it can happen, and it's nice when you are able to actually help someone coming out uh, into the industry. Um, but it's really about you've got to get out there and network. Um, highlight what your skills are. Keep you know, Find three particular things that you're good at. Obviously, get your passion across for the industry and why you want to get involved with it, not just because it's fun, party, 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 um, which it is, obviously. So really, yeah, get, get your points across, make yourself different, and get out there and just go and see anyone that could potentially have a, a network that you can actually tap into. And probably just to add to that, have a clear idea of what your goals are within 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And I know people say you shouldn't sort of necessarily have those long spans these days, but if, if I think back and again, you know, I, I see it with a lot of graduates, a lot of people coming out of school, they, they want to be the finished article and on a really high wage immediately and things don't work that way so you need to put in and it's sort of an old old school way of thinking more traditional but you need to put in that effort and um, that's again back to attitude so you need to sort of forego and understand that there's going to be a, a lot of work and effort up front to get you to where you want to be and then in senior positions earning a, a good wage and, and what have you so if you're prepared for that and you work for it and you set out your goals and objectives and to all those points you just made get involved You'll have fun along the way, but you're going to get to where you want to be a lot quicker than if you stagnate and complain about wanting to be there without actually putting the effort in.